Welcome to part two of the Beige G3 Upgrade Extravaganza. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I'd recommend starting there because we took two of these machines and combined them into this one very nice looking machine. We upgraded the memory and we put a video card in from a blue and white G3, which is what this is running on right now. So today we're gonna try to do the impossible. We're gonna take the G3 processor out of this thing and replace it with a G4. Oh, hello there, Yoshi. Did you know that you're famous and when you're not in the video, people will actually become quite cross? You weren't in the last episode and people noticed. That's right. Uh, can I have my computer back? Thanks. So first, a quick update from the last episode. If you'll remember, we installed three 256 megabyte memory modules, but the computer is only showing 384 megabytes when it should be 768. So originally I was thinking that maybe it wasn't reading all of the memory modules and I was hoping that it wasn't something wrong with the board and one of the RAM slots wasn't bad or something. But if we look in system profiler, we can see that it's recognizing all three DIMMs, but it's seeing them as 128 megabytes only. So it's only seeing half of each stick. So in doing a little bit of research, it turns out that this computer and the rest of the beige G3s have some problems with too high of a density memory stick. So the G3 tower, this desktop, and the all-in-one. So I ordered three new sticks of 256 megabyte low density memory, and hopefully it's low profile enough to still fit in this case and allow it to close properly. But it's on the way now, and I have high hopes that we'll get this up to its full 768 megs of RAM. Okay, so I have here the motherboard out of a Power Mac G4 Yikes which was essentially a blue and white G3 with a G4 processor kind of hacked in. And it uses the same Ziff Zero Insertion Force processor card that the blue and white G3 used and also used by the beige G3 desktop. So all we're gonna do is pop this out and then we're going to swap it into our beige G3. Warranty void if removed. Ah, well, here goes my warranty. All right, here's the fun part. Let's get this installed in the G3. And we can see the G3 right here and the G4 right here, same card. So here is the Ziff processor card and in the middle, that's the PowerPC processor. And then the two big chips above it, which kind of make this look like a Mickey Mouse head, which side note, now that I thought of that, I can never unsee it. Uh, those two big chips are the cache and they called it zero insertion force just because I guess you lay it down on the socket, but lots of Intel processors and AMD processors use the same kind of technique and they just called it a socket. But I guess Apple marketing thought zero, zero insertion, insertion force. force sounded a lot better. So on our G4 here, we'll just line up the missing pin in the corner with the notch on the ZIF slot.
perfect fit. And it does look like this will physically fit in the space. This is the G4 heatsink, but I think it's too tall. So for now, we'll just use the G3's original heatsink, and hopefully that's enough. There we go, we are installed. I guess let's see if this thing just boots up. Well, all right, here we are in the Mac OS 922 desktop on our new G4. Let's see what about this computer says. Nothing new there. Let's see what Apple System Profiler says. Wow, would you look at that? Our PowerPC G4 clocked at the original G3's 266 megahertz. That's amazing. We did it. We have a beige desktop G4. I, I can't even tell you how excited I am that this worked. I had my doubts, even though everything I read said it would work, but my God, we've done it. Beige desktop G4. So next step, 266, that's a little bit of a paltry speed. This G4 is rated for 350 and perhaps could go even faster. So I think it's time to play with the jumpers and overclock this to a respectable speed. So the way that the processor clock speed is set on this board in the Beige G3, the blue and white G3, and the Yugs G4 is pretty interesting, mainly because it's so convenient. Underneath the cards here, there is a little white block with a sticker going across it that says void warranty if seal is broken. And under that sticker, that white block is actually a jumper block, setting uh, the jumps on this set of pins down here and to change both the processor speed and the bus speed, all you have to do is remove this jumper block and set a new jumper configuration. And I just so happen to have this handy sheet of different jumper configurations for different clock speeds. So let's take these cards out and take that jumper block off. Okay, so we've got our bag of little mini jumpers here. And these are not normal size jumpers like you would get off of a hard drive or something, but these are extra small jumpers. And I'll link the exact type that you need in the description below in case you are trying to do this yourself. So let's void our warranty. There we go, and I only bent two pins. So there's our little jumper block. Okay, and I'm gonna start out going for 366 megahertz, since this chip is supposed to be 350. And if that seems all right, why don't we try 400? So let's get those jumpers in place. All right, so we've got five jumpers in place on two, three, five, six, and seven. All right, let's fire it up and see if our overclock took. Happy Mac, that's a good sign. 
All right, it may have frozen. Let's try resetting our PRAM. Okay, so at first I thought that my overclocks were failing, but then I realized that instead I'm just an idiot and I didn't realize that this wouldn't boot this install of 922 without the personality card installed because some of the extensions are tied to it and holding down shift, I guess, didn't do anything. Um, so installed the personality card. I trial and errored through a couple different jumper settings and I finally got what seems to be a stable clock. So instead of our G3 266, we now have a G4 366 megahertz. And that is a pretty sweet overclock. So what I'm gonna do now is maybe let it do a little bit of a stress test. And what better stress test than installing the worst version of Mac OS X ever released? So I'll install this and I'm sure it'll take forever. And we'll see if it makes it all the way through the install. But in the meantime, I'm gonna call this video here. And in the next video, we will do a couple more upgrades and make sure that the overclocked processor is stable. Um, we'll try to put some solid state storage in here to make this thing just the ultimate beige G3. And I even have a couple even stranger cards that we can install. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see the next one, please subscribe down below. And of course, I'd appreciate a thumbs up as well. See you in the next video.